Okay, this is an Anfield Wrap special interview with uh, John Barnes. Uh, we're ridiculously excited. We're all going to try and keep it in check. Uh, I'm very tense. Uh, with me is John himself, obviously. We've got John Gibbons and we've got Rob Gutman with us as well. Um, John, before we get into talking about some stuff when you first came to Liverpool, I want to talk about this charity first and foremost. You're here to support them tonight, uh, Kevin Sampson. Um, and you're doing um, it's, it's a charity that's about getting young people doing things. And I think that's fascinating. It's not about just some sort of outward help, it's they're actively being active in the community? Yes, um, it's only because a friend of mine, Maureen Sinclair, who was heavily involved in film and television years ago, she, she's involved in this, in this um, charity and uh, she, I did an interview with her, as Kevin did, down in Birkenhead, just talking about, as you say, again, kids active in the community to yeah. do things. And then she said to me, um, do you want to do an audience with John Barnes? Um, I think that Johnny Vegas was doing, I'm not sure. So I said, yeah, sure, why not? And of course, I know Kevin well. So um, I won't say I'm actively involved in the charity, no. but obviously she's asked me to come along and do this for the charity, so I'm, I'm only too happy to do so, because I do like to talk. Well, you do like to talk, and that's one of the things that this charity, this charity is about telling stories, that's what it is, it's getting people to understand, young people to understand their lives, the, the issues, and some of the radical issues that affect them through telling stories, and that's what you're here to do tonight, and it's, yeah. we forget how important that is, and, and it's hard to teach children how to do that, they, they learn it innately, but getting them to do that in a structured environment, it can only be a good thing. Yeah, it is a very, very simple thing to do, because we all have a story. And um, nobody's story is more interesting than anybody else's. It, it yeah. depends on the way you tell it. So, of course, you know, being in the public eye, and if you look at a lot of, uh, of which I'm not one, by the way, celebrity. Yeah. If you look at, you know, what goes on, people assume that um, because you are a celebrity, you have led a more interesting life than than a lot of people. But some of the most interesting stories come from very normal people. So if kids growing up feel that they have more a story to tell because they aren't a celebrity or never likely to be a celebrity, they couldn't be, you know, further from, from the truth. Well, what I want to talk to you about while we've got you here is, within that, is not the obvious stories, at least not to start with, about your time as a Liverpool player. I want to almost touch on the more social side. The time that you spent, you were in Watford, you were playing for Watford, you lived down in London, you then, Liverpool want to sign you. What were your perceptions of the city from the outside before you, you, you were coming up? I knew nothing about the city apart from, listen, I came from Jamaica when I was, um, and funny you called the Anfield Rap because well, that's part of the Anfield Rap, I came from Jamaica and my name is John <laughs> <laughs> So as much as I said I came from Jamaica, not part of the Rap, uh, no, yeah, in, the, in my head. I came from Jamaica uh, when I was 13, so of course, um, living in London and signing for Watford, which is five miles outside North London, yeah. um, north of the Watford gap didn't exist. Starting to play football for Watford, obviously we then came to up north, we mm -hmm. go, you know, Watford in the first division, so we came to Hull and we came to Liverpool and places, but they're just places that you quickly visited and quickly got out of because mm -hmm. life doesn't exist north, north of the Watford Gap, as far as the as southerners are concerned. Exactly, yeah. So mm -hmm. that's the perception I had of northern life. Um, although when I came to Liverpool, to Liverpool uh, I recognised even in a very small time, because if I, if I, when I played for Watford, I used to come to Liverpool, obviously for two days, stay overnight, play, then go back. But in those two days, you came across a very passionate group of people. And when we went up to Newcastle and when we went north, mm. you know, it just seemed back then that people up north were just more alive and more passionate. Obviously, you know, in terms of life and money and prestige, London is the place to be. But in terms of real life, always, that's which why I haven't gone back down south. Real life for me is north of Birmingham. Uh, Rob also made a similar journey around the same time. Rob, you know, it's what this is what I want to drive at. Really, people forget what Liverpool was like back then. You know, what was it like to go out in Liverpool back then? Very different to how it was now, because Liverpool had come through the through the riots. I think when you arrived, John, eighty-seven, six mm. years past the riots. Liverpool city centre was, was was wild west compared to how it was now, but it was very alive and it was vibrant and it was quite an exciting place to be. And I, I like you, John, I was I was brought up in North London, supporting Liverpool. I came up and it was it was it was a crazy place to be. But I, yeah, as I said, the, the passion was something else. I was I was going I was talking to you beforehand, Neil, about this, John. I wanted to ask you this. You went on this journey. You arrived up here. It was a point where your, your career suddenly went stellar. And you, there's the similarities to how Luis Suarez's career goes. You found yourself a world top three, top five player. Uh, and then Liverpool fans began to feel, are we going to have this guy forever? And it, it, there were talk about you going to Italy. And through, through the passage of time, where things didn't happen, you had the injury. You ended up staying with Liverpool for a long, long time in the way that people can't imagine Suarez would. It feels like you've become a scouser. Well, look, you feel that way yourself. I, I mean, my, my, my kids are. And I, you know, yeah, I, I've never too. gone back down south and I, and I wouldn't go back down south. But I don't think at that particular time that people were ever thinking I was going to leave. There may have been mentioning it's about Italy. There's a lot but of back media then, stuff. Though. Of course, but back then, you know, players would stay at, a, at the club forever. You yeah, know what I mean? Sure, so, sure. I mean, now, you, you, never mind Suarez, look at Torres. You know, so now superstar players yeah, leave yeah. clubs all the time. Well, Russia then, did then. Yeah, yeah. but Russia went well, for one year. Yeah, and he came yeah. back. Of course, <laughs> that's always going to happen. But in yeah. terms of a lot of the players leave, look at Brian Robson stayed at Manchester United, mm. even in the lean days. 
you it was know, more common. And Brian Robson is the greatest player England had. England's captain. Manchester United aren't winning. He never thought about leaving Manchester United. So, you know, football sure. was slightly different back then. But, you know, it's interesting. The interesting thing for me when I first came to Liverpool, because, of course, you came up and friends of mine when I started playing from down south came up and mm. they loved it. They came up every weekend, even when I went to Newcastle. Too, they would still come up. All yeah. my friends were in Liverpool and I'm like, I'm not there anymore because I'm playing somewhere else. And, and they're coming to Liverpool because they love the, 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 the people. The passion was fantastic. Yeah. But well, the interesting talent. thing for me when I first came up to Liverpool was coming into town and even just walking around town. Because, of course, when I came up, I met friends who, who, who were black and lived in Toxteth. But you never really saw many black people in town, which I found so no, strange. No, you never did. You know, and even working in the shops. And I thought Toxteth must be 50 miles away because there's no black people working in shops. Mm. Like you go to London, Oxford Street, there are all black people working in shops and in the middle of town and stuff. Sure. I didn't realize Toxteth was only a mile up the road. In fact, Toxteth is probably the closest, you know, area. Yeah. Um, from the town point is of view, where, where yeah. exactly where where people live, you know, yeah. uh, that was just so strange. And over the years, you've seen that change. Um, and I don't know whether because of you know, of course, with the riots and stuff like that. But I didn't know the the dynamic between the black community and Liverpool the relationship they had. But I just found it so strange that with yeah. Toxteth being from so close to the middle of town that they didn't come into town, which obviously you know has changed now. But it took a long time for that to happen, which I found very strange. John, can I ask you very quickly, uh, I was thinking about today about all your symmetries for yourself and, and Steven Gerrard in their later parts of the career. And for Gerrard, it's, um, it's, you know, he was an explosive midfielder, he was a goal coming midfielder, and now maybe his legs are, are going a little bit more, he has to play a, a deeper role. And I thought about you going from that left wing into central midfield. How did you find it to adapt and how, how much of your game did you have to change and how difficult was it? Well, I think I, I empathise a lot with Steven in terms of, I won't say his reluctance, but because Steven you know, probably still feels that he has that, whereas... For me, it happened overnight because I ruptured my kidney's tendon, yeah. so I had to do that. I didn't have a choice. Whereas for Stephen, it has been gradual, yeah, and it hasn't been forced upon him. It has been forced upon him in terms of time, his age, maybe you know he's getting on a bit. Whereas with me, I was 28, so I wasn't old when I ruptured my kidney's tendon. So overnight, I had to change the way I played. So it, it was easy for me to accept because it's either me I change the way I play, or I don't play anymore. Whereas for Stephen, it hasn't happened that way. So while a lot of people are saying, you know. It is not a slight on Stephen whatsoever because we all get older and yeah. because of the, the injuries we've had over the years, he then has to change the way he plays. And in fact, Stephen is probably more able to change than I was because I was never a defensive player. Whereas Stephen, even in his heyday when he could drive forward, if you ask Stephen to play as a centre back or as a defensive midfield player or as a right back, he could do that even in his heyday. Um, whereas I was never that type of player. So I think it, it would be more natural for Stephen to actually revert to being a defensive midfield player than it was for me. So um, it's just a question of getting your head around the fact that this is probably, and from Liverpool's point of view, this is probably what, I'm, what the team needs me to do more because if you look at, obviously, with Coutinho and Suarez and Sturridge and the wing-backs, we don't really need rely that heavily now on Stevens attacking impetus, if you like, which we did when it was Gerard and Torres, Gerard and Suarez. We have enough creative players now for him to really then say to himself, I can now play as a holding midfield player, which is probably where I'm more needed. Do you think it's a danger, John? People don't appreciate what he's now bringing because they still hanker for that player. I remember at the time, uh, and I wish I could go back and go, imagine we got this player called John Barnes at 33 who did a Gary McAllister plus job and he was fantastic in our central midfielder. But at the time, there was always this regret that you weren't the flying guy. Right. Yeah. And Stephen's got the same problem, hasn't he? Well, you know, I thought to myself, as much as I wasn't able to do that anymore, but why I wasn't even bothered about doing that was because when Steve McManaman came on, I saw my job as just to get the ball and really Steve McManaman to do what he did. Yeah. You know, so, mm. so, so now, well. from Stephen's point of view, um, if he can then say, okay, um, yes, I'm not required to do that, but if we can get the ball into Coutinho, get the ball to Sturridge, yeah. get the ball to Suarez, get the ball to the wing backs to go and put crosses in, then that's all I need to do. So, I don't, you see, I haven't spoken to Stephen, I don't even know him that well to, to then know that he has decided either he wants to do it or he doesn't want to do it. Yeah. But I think the situation comes when I understand from the fans' point of view, saying, oh, John Barnes isn't what he, what he needs to do anymore. But I can tell you one thing, if Stephen then, and I suppose he still can, decides that he's then going to be the driver from midfield to take the ball forward, you won't see Coutinho. And you sure. will see lesser Suarez and you see lesser storage. Mm. Because you can't have everybody doing that. No, you yeah, know, sure, and they have sure. enough players now to do it. So Do you think he could still well, do that? Sorry. Stephen. Yeah. I think I think Stephen can if you've got more defensive players behind him. Yeah. But it's not necessary because you have enough people doing that. Yeah. One last question, maybe trying to touch on it before very, very quickly. It's nineteen eighty eight, it's Saturday night, you're about to go out, you've just won. What club are you going to? Because anyone. Go on, the Yeah, the Might not do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much to John for doing this. Thanks to Clapperboard for having us. Um, you're going to have a great night in the Epstein with Kev Sampson. We're going to take it easy. That is the Anfield wrap. I'm playing for the school football team. And did you play for Kirby Boys? I, I played for all my school football teams. 
Um, it's fantastic. My, my, my early school before I went to Brookfield in Kirby was, was a place called Rushy Hay, which was my junior school. 